Gunsmoke. Brought to you by Chesterfield. Made the modern way with Accuray. Smoother. Cooler. Best for you. Around Dodge City and in the territory on West, there's just one way to handle the killers and the spoilers, and that's with a U.S. Marshal and the smell of gun smoke. Gunsmoke, starring William Conrad, the transcribed story of the violence that moved west with young America, and the story of a man who moved with it. I'm that man, Matt Dillon, United States Marshal. The first man they look for and the last they want to meet. It's a chancy job, and it makes a man watchful and a little lonely. <laughs> Time for a drink? Oh, I'll go with you, Doc. Good, good. And yeah, the long branch is closest. Let's go in there. Okay. <laughs> yeah, some people say it doesn't look good for a doctor to be seen in a saloon. Especially in the daytime. Yeah. Oh, oh, then you believe it, too? Oh, no, no, not me. I, I look on doctors as almost human. Almost human? Oh, oh, almost human. Well, well, that's mighty terrible of you. I'll think of that the next time you come crawling around with your throat cut or, or with a bullet in you. You'll feel better when you get your drink, Doc. Yeah, I'll feel better when I talk to Kitty. <laughs> Hello, Doc. Matt. Hello, Kitty. It's a pleasure to see you, Kitty. It's a real pleasure. Well, thanks, Doc. <laughs> Sam, a bottle and two glasses. Okay, Doc. <laughs> I'm buying the lady a drink. You sure you haven't had enough already, Doc? Oh, now, just because you're not used to men who act like gentlemen. <laughs> I think he's talking about me, Kitty. Yeah, I figured that. What have you two been arguing about this time? Oh, we don't have been working up to an argument, Kitty. Well, there's somebody else here who seems to be doing that. Oh? Hmm? That cowboy at the end of the bar. Oh, what about it? I heard him telling Sam he's got a pack horse outside, loaded with ammunition. Well, there's no harm in that, is there? He said it's to kill Kansans with Doc. Well, what did he mean, Kitty? I don't know, Matt. But he's awful mad about something. I'll be back in a minute. Oh, no, no. Be careful. Be careful. Hello. My name's Dillon. I'm the marshal here. My name is Jim Hoyt, and I wish I'd never heard of Kansas. Oh, where are you from, Hoyt? Dina River. Texas, huh? Texas. You staying here long? Long enough to finish this drink. And since you're so nosy, I'll tell you. I'm with nine other Texans. We got 2,000 head of cattle six days' drive from here. They're branded Cross R and Jack Raven's Trail Boss. Anything else you want to know? Yeah, there's something else. Have all of the men in that outfit got their backs up like you have? Don't you worry none about us, Marshal. We'll handle things. With all that ammunition they sent you for? What's going on down there, anyway? Nothing a few Texans can't take care of. Why don't you want to tell me about it, Hoyt? Because I don't trust you no more than I'd trust any Kansan. Then why don't you finish your drink? Because I'm going to ride back with you. <laughs> Chesterfield's best for you. 
they satisfy you. If you want tomorrow's better cigarette today, next time you buy cigarettes, stop. Remember, only Chesterfield is made the modern way with Accuray. You'll notice how fresh and good Chesterfield's made with Accuray taste, how smooth they are, and how they satisfy. So buy Chesterfield today. Smoother, cooler, best for you. Jim Hoyt didn't like it much, but I got Chester and we saddled up and rode south with him. Nobody said a word the whole day. And that night, Chester and I spelled each other, keeping awake so as Hoyt wouldn't slip out on us. He knew what we were doing, and of course he just stretched out on the ground and enjoyed a good night's rest. It was late the next afternoon, soon after we'd crossed the Cimarron, that we ran into the Cross R herd, bedding down for the night. We rode around it, up to the chuck wagon fire, and dismounted. Jack Raven's a trail boss, Marshal, and that's him leaning against that wagon studying. Now, yeah, let's go talk to him, Chester. And you tell him how you got here so he'll know who to get mad at. I'll do that, Hoyt. That's what I was saying. Well, them's the first word Hoyt said in the last ten miles. I guess he's been saving his strength. What for? I don't know. Maybe the boss here will tell us. Yeah, if he don't shoot us first, he looks down right unfriendly to me. Jack Raven? That's me. My name's Matt Dillon, Miss Chester Proudfoot. I do. Howdy. I'm a U.S. Marshal, Raven. Dodge? Uh-huh. This your first time up the trail? First time for any of it. Now, Jim Hoyt didn't tell me much. He didn't want me down here at all. And why'd you come? I got curious about that ammunition you sent him to Dodge for. Some law against it? Now, that depends on what you aim to use it for. We aim to kill Kansans with it, Marshal. Uh huh. You got any particular Kansans in mind? I ain't particular. You told me that's your first trip up here, the first trip for any of you, huh? What's that got to do with it? You lost many cattle? I've lost all I'm going to. How many? Some 20, 30 head. Sampede? Two of them. How'd they get started? Men. Men out there waving blankets they set fire to in the night. And they wasn't engines, neither. We've seen them, but we couldn't chase them or go shooting at them, or we'd have lost the whole herd. Now, why did you send Hoyt for ammunition? You gonna start shooting next time? We're short ammunition, Marshal. Next time it happens, we thought maybe we'd some of us take off a few days to do a little hunting. I see. I want to get this herd to Dodge. I want to get it sold. Then we're riding back this way. And shoot anybody you come across, is that it? Well, like I said, I ain't particular, Marshal. Not about Kansans, I ain't. Tell me something, Raven. You ever hear of jayhawkers? No. They're outlaws, Raven. They're murderers, criminals. They're men who started riding on the Missouri border during the war, and they got the taste of blood in their mouths. Now it's like they got no place to go. So they're out after anything in sight. And they cause a lot of trouble. And why don't you stop them? We try. Don't forget, the ordinary Kansan hates jayhawkers as much as you do. But what do they want? What good's it do them to stampede my herd? You'll find out what they want. They'll let you know. And I want to stay here to help you when they do. I don't know whether I trust you or not. Well, I guess you'll have to find that one out, too, Raven. Yeah, I'll find it out. I got work to do now. I don't know if the cook will feed any Kansas men, but you can go ask him. Mr. Dillon. Mr. Dillon? What? What? What is it, Chester? It's almost daylight. Oh, yeah. Uh, I guess we better get up. I declare I didn't hear a thing all night. I slept right through. 
What if it'd been a stampede, you'd have heard it, Chester. Maybe them Jayhawkers uh, just quit. Maybe. Mr. Dillon. Yeah, what? Well, look yonder, riding that horse. That's Jim Hoyt. Well, where's his clothes? And look, he's all bloodied up. They're having to help him get down off his horse. There's Jack Raven. Yeah. What in the world do you suppose happened? He didn't get those marks on his back from a fall. Take a look at Jim Hoyt, Marshal. Take a good look. Where'd they catch you, Hoyt? How come you know anybody caught me, Marshal? That's a good question. How do you know? This has happened before. It's one of their methods. Filthy cans of... Jayhawkers. Mighty Raven. fancy name for a bunch of murdering devils. You were on guard and they sneaked up on you. Is that the way it happened? They stripped me and flogged me. Then they give them a message for me. They want money, huh? I got 2,000 head of cattle, Marshal. If I pay them Jayhawkers $2 a head, they say there won't be no more trouble. By sundown. They want that money by sundown. You gonna pay it, Raven? I'd rather lose a whole herd. We'll ride guard in pairs tonight. There won't be any more beatings. And I hope there's no shooting. Them cattle are ready to run most anything by now. We'd like to ride with you, Raven. I might trust you, Marshal. I don't know. But the men wouldn't. They'd never stand for it. All right. Well, we're going to be around. We're not leaving here. And you better keep pretty close to camp. You might get yourself killed if you stray very far. This electronic miracle, Accuray, means that everything from auto tires to apple pie, battleship steel to baby food, butter to cigarettes, can be made better and safer for you. Now meet Mr. Bert Choke, brilliant young president of industrial nucleonics. A word exactly what is Accuray? Well, George, it is a device by which a stream of electrons passes through and analyzes the product while it is actually being made. They transmit what they see to this electronic brain which adjusts the production machinery for errors down to millions of an inch. One more question, one that so many people ask me. How does Accuray make Chesterfield a better cigarette than was ever possible before? Every cigarette made with Accuray control contains a more precise measure of perfectly packed tobaccos. So Chesterfield smokes smoother, without hot spots or a hard draw. And that's why Chesterfield tastes so much better. And I guess that's why you smoke them yourself, Bert. You see, I know what Accuray can do. Well, there's your answer. If you want tomorrow's better cigarette today, next time, stop. Remember. Only Chesterfield is made the modern way with Accuray. Best for you. I took Raven's advice, and Chester and I stayed with a chug wagon all that day. But when the herd was bedded down about dusk, we saddled up and rode out of camp. Raven had his men standing guard by twos, all right. And he had the herd lying on a plane that apparently nobody could approach without being seen a mile or so off. We scouted the land all dark. And just as the moon was coming up, we found what I'd been hoping for. A deep gully about a half a mile from the herd. The contour of the land made it difficult to see unless you were almost on top of it. And I picked it as the most likely approach the Jayhawkers had used. We hit our horses at the bottom and then climbed back out. That's an awful long gully, Mr. Dillon. Yeah. Them Jayhawkers could ride out of it most anywhere for a mile or so. Yeah, they could, Chester, but... Right in here is where it's closest to the herd. Oh, we better lie down. Yes, 
You know, I've been thinking, Mr. Dillon, there's only two of us. Might go hard if we have to shoot it out with maybe a dozen men. Well, I'm hoping there won't be any shooting at all. You know, most half mouth might heard. Hadn't ought to bother him very much. It'd bother him. Like Raven said, those cattle are ready to run at anything. Well, if we can't shoot, how are we going to stop them Jayhawkers? Well, most of the kind are cowards, Chester. If we surprise them, maybe we can scare them into dropping their guns. You believe that? Well, I'm gambling on it anyway. If we start a stampede by getting into a gun battle over here, those Texans aren't going to treat us any better than they would the Jayhawkers. They sure are a hard-headed lot, ain't they? Yeah, they got some cause to be, Chester. Well, they got no cause to be. Shh. Listen. Somebody in the gulch. They're right down there, Mr. Dillon. I'll come climb it out in a minute. Not if we're on top of them. Come on. Don't do any shooting unless I do, huh? No, I won't. Quiet now. No, no. no. Too much moon to ride over there. We'll stampede them from here. All we got to do is spread out along this gulch and start shooting. Uh-huh. It don't matter whether you hit cows or Texans. <laughs> now, let's spread out a little, Joseph. We'll crawl right up on top of them. All right, you. Come on. No, no. We're a long ways off. We've set up enough rifle fire. Them cattle stampede shore. They'll have their hands so full of chasing them, they won't have time to worry us. You men are covered. Get your hands up. You better do what he says. We're all around you. That's right, man. He'll kill us anyway. No. All right, Chester, give it to him. One of them's getting away, Mr. Dillon. Will we chase him? No, let him go, Chester. We got the other three. He sure did put up a fight, didn't he? Yeah. I kind of misjudged her being cowards and quitting. Listen, listen, listen. Yeah, it's the cattle. We started another stampede after all. Come on, we better go help them. No, they're running the other way. We'd never get anywhere near them. I bet them Texans is going to be mighty mad. Yeah, and mostly at us. We left the Jayhawkers right where they died rode slowly back to camp. Nobody was there but the cook, so we sat down and waited. We waited three or four hours before any riders showed up. And when they did, they weren't exactly friendly. They stood around at a distance and watched us as though they were guarding a couple of prisoners. Finally, Jim Hoyt walked over to us. It was you done all that shooting, Marshal. Some of it, yeah. I was shooting, too. Well, the men wants to hang you. Oh, is that so? We seen you riding around, didn't know what you was up to, but we sure found out, didn't we, man? All right, now you just look here. Take There's it easy. There's four Justin. of us here now. You gonna put up a fight? I don't blame you for being mad, Hoyt. Now the rest of you. But that's no excuse to be talking about lynching anybody. We ain't talking, Marshal. We're going to do it. Wouldn't you like to know why we were doing the shooting? We know all we need to know. Unbuckle them guns, both Use your head, Hoyt. It's Jack Raven. Raven ain't going to stop us. What's going on here? We're about to hang us a couple of Kansans, Raven. Yeah, that's what I figured. Don't aim to have no interference. All right. I don't give you any. Good. I want to tell you something first, though. Say it out. I was kind of curious about it, so I rode over to where those two did all that shooting. You know what I found? Bunch of empty cartridges. I found three dead men, Hoyt, laying in a gully. You what? Now, I don't know what these here jayhawkers are supposed to look like, but them three men I found... That's how they ought to look. This for true, Reed? It's true. Well, I guess I've been a little hot-headed. 
I didn't trust the marshal either. Not at first. Well, Lane, well, you done our work for us, Marshal. It was you too. Found them devils and faced them. Ah, oh, forget it, Hoyt. It's over. I don't think he'll be bothered anymore. Say, Marshal, me and Hoyt and the men, uh, well, we've had a bad trip. When we get to Dodge, we'll maybe want to kick up our heels a little. Well, short of gunplay, Raven, this is one outfit that can rot Dodge all at once. Now, what do you get there? The first bottle's on me. If you want tomorrow's better cigarette today, Next time you buy cigarettes, stop. Remember, only Chesterfield is made the modern way with Accuray. You'll notice how fresh and good Chesterfield's made with Accuray taste, how smooth they are, and how they satisfy. So buy Chesterfield today. Smoother, cooler, best for you. <laughs> Gunsmoke, produced and directed by Norman McDonald, stars William Conrad as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal. Our story was specially written for Gunsmoke by John Meston, with music composed and conducted by Rex Corey. Sound patterns by Tom Hanley and Ray Kemper. Featured in the cast were Lawrence Dobkin, Barney Phillips, and Harry Bartell. Harley Bear is Chester, Howard McNear is Doc, and Georgia Ellis is Kitty. The makers of Chesterfield and l m Filters... Salute the National Safety Council on their 43rd National Safety Congress, which is being held in Chicago October 17th through October 21st. Make today your big red letter day, your L&M red letter day. Superior taste and filter, it's the miracle tip. Make today your big red letter day, change to L&M today. L&M's got everything. Superior taste. And superior filter. Get L&M today. This is it. L&M, superior taste and filter. Superior taste from tobaccos especially selected for filter smoking. Tobaccos that are richer, tastier. Light and mild. And L&M's superior filter is white, pure white. Truly the miracle tip, because when it's added to L&M tobaccos, it actually improves your enjoyment of this great cigarette. Next time you buy cigarettes, look for the big red letters L&M. Smoke L&M filters. America's best filter tip cigarette. Be sure and listen to Gunsmoke again on radio next week at the same time. Transcribed for Chesterfield.